We're following some breaking news right now. Homeland Security raiding the homes of Sean Diddy Combs. This is his home in Star Island. Live pictures where Homeland Security investigations uh, investigators are right now on the scene. This just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say less than 10 minutes ago. Don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is, TG Jakes, any of them, the, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. All of these uh, big deviants is all catching hell in 2024. Cat Williams seems to have been right all along when he claimed that music executive Sean Diddy's days as a free man are numbered. The comedian made these claims earlier on this year during his interview with Shannon Sharp on Club Shay Shay podcast. All of these uh, big deviants is all catching hell in 2024. Well, it now seems that Diddy's time has officially run out. For context, Sean Diddy Combs' three properties have been raided by federal agents. Earlier today, Homeland Security Investigations, HSI New York, executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation, with assistance from HSI Los Angeles, HSI Miami, and our local law enforcement partners. We will provide further information as it becomes available, a Homeland Security Investigations representative said in a statement to People. On Monday afternoon, TMZ reported that federal cops arrived at the rapper's LA home, with helicopters above the property. The outlet says the case is in relation to human T allegations. A video from Fox 11 showed Diddy's sons Justin and Christian King Combs in handcuffs outside of their Beverly Hills home. This just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say less than 10 minutes ago. In any case, many people are claiming that the officers raided Diddy's home in order to gather any possible evidence that could potentially link him to the many allegations that he is currently facing. We will always support law enforcement when it seeks to prosecute those that have violated the law. Hopefully this is the beginning of a process that will hold Mr. Combs responsible for his depraved conduct. Douglas Wigdor, attorney for Cassie Ventura and Jane Doe, who each previously filed lawsuits against Diddy, told people in a statement. In the past several months, five people have accused Combs of essay and similar allegations. In November 2023, the singer Cassie, real name Cassandra Ventura, filed an explosive federal lawsuit against her former partner Sean Diddy Combs, claiming he had been physically insane throughout their relationship. The complaint alleged that Combs AB ranged from beating Ventura and forcing her to be intimate with other men to essaying her at her home in 2018. The rapper settled the lawsuit within a day. But since then, three more women and one man have sued Combs, accusing him of a wide range of abusive behavior, including harassment, SA, non-consensual P, and STF ficking. The music mogul has denied all the allegations, claiming that his accusers are attempting to assassinate his character, destroy his reputation, and his legacy. Cassie alleged she was the victim of a pattern of abuse, violence, and ST ficking. Ventura sued under New York's Adult Survivors Act, which gave victims a one-time, one-year window to sue their alleged S abusers and institutions, even if the statute of limitations had run out. The window expired in November. She says she first met Combs in 2005, when she was 19 and he was 37. In the lawsuit, she alleges that Combs controlled nearly every aspect of her life, from her career to having access to her personal medical records. She claims he was frequently violent, physically abusing her multiple times a year, and that he often plied her with copious amounts of substances. The complaint also claims that Combs forced Ventura to have S with male S workers in different cities. Encounters she says he watched, do, and recorded. The singer says she never went to the police because she was afraid that doing so would merely give Mr. Combs another excuse to hurt her. She also alleged that, following a dinner in 2018, Combs forced himself into her apartment and essayed her while she repeatedly said no and tried to push him away. Ventura says she ended the relationship for good afterward. In her lawsuit, she referred to multiple witnesses who saw the abuse take place. One of them is her friend, singer-songwriter Tiffany Red, who wrote an open letter to Combs describing an incident on Ventura's 29th EH birthday party in 2015. Ventura and Red claim that that night, Combs and his security team forced Ventura to leave because he wanted her to have S encounters with other men. Red said Ventura had disclosed to her at the time that Combs was physically abusive. I feel compelled to show up for Cassie and myself and confirm that everything she described in her complaint about what happened that night is consistent with what I experienced," she wrote. In a statement to the New York Times, Combs's lawyer Benjamin Braffman said Combs denied the allegations and that the lawsuit was riddled with baseless and outrageous lies, aiming to tarnish Mr. Combs's reputation and seeking a payday. 
Ventura and Combs settled the lawsuit one day after it was filed. The details remain private. Braffman said that the settlement is in no way an admission of wrongdoing. I have decided to resolve this matter amicably on terms that I have some level of control, Ventura said in a statement. I want to thank my family, fans, and lawyers for their unwavering support. Meanwhile, Combs said, We have decided to resolve this matter amicably. I wish Cassie and her family all the best. Love. Four more people have come forward with allegations against Diddy. Following the settlement, Liza Gardner filed a lawsuit on November 23rd, right before the Adult Survivors Act expired. She says she and a friend met Combs and singer-songwriter Aaron Hall at an MCA Records event in 1990 or 1991. They returned to Hall's apartment for an after-party, where Gardner says she was offered more drinks and was coerced into being intimate with Combs. She says Combs also essayed her friend. The lawsuit claims the encounter left Gardner shocked and traumatized, and as she got dressed, Hall allegedly barged into the room, pinned her down, and forced her to have S with him. Gardner claims that Combs came to the home she shared with her friend a few days later and allegedly attacked her again. He came to the house looking for the friend because he was worried she would tell the girl he was with at the time, according to the suit. In another complaint filed the same day, Joey Dickerson Neal alleges that in 1991, she reluctantly went on a date with Combs, who intentionally drugged and essayed her after their dinner. She claims that Combs recorded the assault and showed the tape to other people. While Dickerson Neal did not go to the authorities immediately after the alleged assault, she says she did eventually file a police report with unspecified agencies in New York and New Jersey. The complaint says prosecutors told her they'd need to corroborate her allegations, but she believes possible witnesses were terrified that Combs would retaliate against them and that they would lose future business and music opportunities if they made a statement backing her account. A spokesperson for Diddy said the two women's claims are fabricated and accused them of exploiting the Adult Survivors Act. Another woman, referred to as Jane Doe in the complaint, filed a fourth lawsuit on December 6, alleging that Combs, his longtime lieutenant Harve Pierre, and a third unidentified assailant ganged up on her at Combs's Manhattan recording studio in 2003 when she was 17 years old. Pierre, who previously served as president of Combs's Bad Boy Entertainment, has also been sued by a former assistant who alleges he used his position of authority as plaintiff's boss to exploit and essay her several times between 2016 and 2017. The lawsuit claims that the men Doe across state lines from Detroit to New York City on a private jet, plied the young person with substances and alcohol until she couldn't consent, and then violently essayed her as she told them to stop. The complaint also includes several photos that Doe alleges were taken at the studio on that night, including one where she is sitting on Combs's lap. In February, Combs's former producer and videographer filed a federal lawsuit against the mogul, alleging Combs harassed, drugged, and threatened him. According to the lawsuit, Rodney Lil Rod Jones worked on Combs' most recent album, Love, and lived with him between September 2022 and November 2023. Jones alleges he was the victim of constant unsolicited and unauthorized groping and touching of his behind by Mr. Combs. On one occasion, the lawsuit claims, Jones woke up naked and disoriented in bed with Combs and two S workers. He alleges the music mogul drugged him. The complaint also claims that, in his role as Combs' videographer, Jones secured hundreds of hours of footage and audio recordings of Mr. Combs, his staff, and his guests engaging in serious illegal activity. The illegal activity the suit alleges includes acquiring substances, soliciting S-workers, providing lace drinks to young people, and S.A. Jones's suit names several other defendants, including Combs's son Justin, Combs's chief of staff, Christina Corum, Universal Music Group CEO Sir Lucian Grange, and former Motown Records CEO Ethiopia Habtamarium. Combs's lawyer, Sean Hawley, denied Jones's allegations. We have overwhelming, indisputable proof that his claims are complete lies, she told People. However, Diddy has denied all the allegations against him. Enough is enough, Diddy said in a statement. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation and my legacy. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. But his denial has not stopped all the consequences that have come with these allegations. 
In late November, Diddy temporarily stepped down as chairman of Revolt, the media company he founded in 2013. While Mr. Combs has previously had no operational or day-to-day -day role in the business, the company said in a statement, this decision helps to ensure that Revolt remains steadfastly focused on our mission to create meaningful content for the culture and amplify the voices of all black people throughout this country and the African diaspora. Capital Prep Harlem, a charter school he opened in 2016, also announced it would end its partnership with the music mogul. Additionally, Variety reported that a new reality show featuring Combs, which was in the early stages of development at Hulu, has also been scrapped following the allegations. The show, tentatively titled Diddy Plus 7, would have followed Combs and his family. In any case, fans are glad that law enforcement is finally bringing Combs to justice. Karma never misses. It may have taken nearly 30 years, but the chickens have finally come home to roost, one fan commented. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.